Hello everyone, welcome to the third video in the series wherein the mission is to mint our NFT using ERC721 token standard on the Polygon test network. So in the last video, we wrote our smart contract, but now it's time to test if everything in the smart contract is working as per our requirement. So today in this video, we'll first deploy it on our personal blockchain that is on Ganache and then we'll write some tests to see if everything is working fine or not. And if you have any sort of doubts related to the series or anything about the Web3 space, then you can surely ping your doubts on the discord server the link of which is given in the description box down below so without any further delay let's get started so now we are in our project folder and the very first thing that we are going to do now is deploying the smart contract that we had created to ganache that is our personal blockchain so in order to do that we'll be using truffle migrations what is the use of Truffle migrations? So migrations helps us to deploy our smart contract to the Ethereum blockchain. So when we uh, created our Truffle template, there is this migrations folder that got created and there is a file in it already. So we'll make the necessary modification to this file itself. And one key thing to note here is every migration file is prefixed with a number. So here, as you can see, it is prefixed by one. What does this number mean? If we have multiple smart contracts to be deployed, we need to tell Truffle the order in which it should deploy the smart contracts. So here we simply have one smart contract that we want to deploy. So I will keep it one only and I will rename this file. So let me just call it one underscore initial mint contract. Now let's see what all modification we need to do in this file. So the very first line, it's telling Truffle, which is a smart contract that we want to interact with. So what is the smart contract name that we had given? Let's go in the contracts folder and here it's mint contract. So let me change the name of this file and call it mint contract. And uh, let's also keep this as mint contract only now the next thing that you can see here is module.export so what this module.export is doing it's basically an instruction that tells node.js which bit of code to export so that the other files in the project folder can access that code so here we want the deployed smart contract to be accessible by other files as well so instead of migration i will write here mint contract and I will save it. Now let's try to deploy our smart contract to Ganache. So for that, I will open my terminal and I will use the command truffle console. So what this truffle console is doing, it will look for a network called development in the truffle config file. So there is this development uh, network that we have created and then it will connect to it let's run it now i will use the command migrate that will actually deploy our smart contract to ganache and you will be able to see our compiled contract in here all right now there are a few things that we need to observe here so the account is this let's go to ganache and see what has happened so so here the first ad account address is this so whenever we try to migrate or whenever we try to run uh, migrations from ganache it generally uses the first account that is has so you can see the account it used to deploy the smart contract is the first account in our ganache and there is a contract address that got generated so let me create an instance of a smart contract and see what happens so i you, i will name it contract and i will make it equal to my smart contract name that is mint contract dot deployed yes it has created an instance let's try to print this and see what all information it is giving me so these are all the functions that we had in our uh, smart contract the mint nft and the other functions that you are seeing here this it has inherited from the ownable and erc721 uri storage let's see some more uh, information about the smart contract so let's print the address and check if it's matching if we go to transactions and we'll click on this so this created contract address is 0x 
452 and it is matching with this let's see uh, a few more things like in this mint contract solidity file there is a constructor that we had created wherein this is the name and this is the symbol let's try to print and see so let's print contract dot name and it's my nft which is correct and the next thing that we will check is the symbol and it should be nft yes absolutely correct now another thing that we can check is who is the owner of this smart contract so for that i'll be using the function dot owner okay 0x84 which i've told you should be the first account in ganache so yes this is the account which was used to deploy this smart contract and this is the account address which become the owner of this smart contract now the next task that we need to do is we need to write some test to check if our, if our code is working fine or not in every condition let me first tell you why writing test is important you will feel at some point of time that why are we even writing the test it not, it's not mandatory but it's a very good practice to write the test before deploying your smart contract to any of the networks because if you know that once we deploy something to a network since everything written on blockchain is immutable we won't be able to change it so it's always a good idea to first test it okay so now let's proceed on to writing our test so there is this test folder that got created and in this i have already created a test file so the very first thing that we are importing here is an assert module which will provide us a way to test the expressions uh, how we'll be using it that you will get to know later the next three next thing that we are importing here is web3 so web3 is basically a collection of javascript libraries that helps us to interact with the ethereum blockchain so it's basically a portal for us to the ethereum world so we are creating an instance of it and calling it web3 now the next thing that you should think about is since it is something which is connecting us to a blockchain but how does this code know that to which blockchain it should connect to so for that we need to send in a provider in here so for our purpose we'll be passing the rpc server of our ganache to here so that it gets to know that this is the blockchain we are trying to connect to the next thing that we are uh, importing here is the mint contract dot json so if you would have observed when we migrated our smart contract to the blockchain it created an additional folder which was not previously there and it is called build and in it it created a json file of all the smart contracts that we were using so when we deployed our smart contract it converted our smart contract to bytecode which is the code that blockchain understands this contract ABI that we are using here, it's also a byproduct of deployment and it got saved in this mint contract.json file and it's an interface to interact with this bytecode. Okay, so for example, if you want to call a function in a smart contract with this JavaScript code that we are writing, ABI acts as an intermediary between the JavaScript code and the bytecode. So since we'll be interacting with the smart contract, so that's why I am uh, saving this ABI in this ABI array. The next thing that we need to pass in here is the contract address. So the smart contract that we just deployed, we need to pass the address of it. So we'll be getting it from Ganache. If we go to transactions and here there is the contract address, I will copy it and paste it here. Now let's quickly understand what these lines of code are doing. So for writing the test script, uh, these lines, we'll be using the JavaScript testing framework called Mocha. Now we need to create an instance of the contract that we have. So for creating the instance, we'll be using this module called web3.eth. So web3.eth is a package which allows us to interact with an Ethereum blockchain and the Ethereum smart contract and what this web3.eth.contract is doing it's basically creating an instance of the contract that we have deployed so that we can use as if they are they are javascript objects fine okay so whenever we are trying to write any test we want to create an instance of our smart contract in, so that uh, I don't have to do it again and again. I'm writing it in a before each so that before every test, it first 
execute these line of code and then execute the rest of the lines of code the next thing is this describe function what this describe function is doing so to create the test we need to uh, use the describe function to describe what this test is for and inside it we write the its functions uh, and within each it we write one of the tests okay if we have multiple tests we can simply nest them inside a describe function plus i am getting all the accounts that i have in my ganache and i'm storing it in accounts array so now let's go back to our smart contract and see what are some of the things that we can check there could be n number of things that you can check but we'll be just checking two of the things the very first thing that we are going to check is whether the owner of this smart contract is the first account of ganache or not okay the second thing that we are going to check is uh, as i've told you that this function that we have written it creates a token id a unique token id so whether the owner of that token id is same as very first account of our ganache blockchain so these tests are pretty simple so i've created an owner variable here and i'm the instance that i've created i've called it art and from this i'm calling the method called owner since it's a call so i have written dot call and then i'm using this as a dot equal to check if the owner is same as account zero so i'm getting the zeroth account from the array that i have created of accounts the next thing that i'm checking is who is the owner of token id one since for me every token id that i've generated should have the owner as the address which is saved in accounts of zero so here i have created a variable called token uri and i have write abcd in it and then i'm calling my mint nft function since it's a transaction so i need to send some ether from account so those ether i'm sending from account zero that means account zero is calling this function right there is another thing that we will check but before that let's first try to run this and whether uh, see whether this test is running fine or not so i'll again go to my terminal we need to write is simply test let's see if all our test passes or not okay so as you can see both our test passed now let's try to play around a bit and let's try to call this mint nft function from accounts of one instead of zero so since i had given the authority of only the owner of the smart contract to in to have the authority to invocate this mint nft function let me save it and try to run this test again and it should give me a warning sort of thing let's see what happens okay so it has given us some error let's see what is the error uh, that we have got the error that we have got is caller is not the owner when it read this line of code it got to know that uh, accounts of one is not the owner so it gave us the error and it did not go further we are finally done with our smart contract and are pretty confident about everything that we have written so now it's time to deploy it on the polygon test network so in the next video we'll be deploying this particular smart contract on the polygon test network so if you like this video don't forget to like share and subscribe see you in the next one